Chapter 6 Pressure This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Pressure definition. Pressure, P is the force acting per unit area. Hence, the formula of pressure is P equals F over A. Pressure is a scalar quantity. The SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square or Pascal, symbol PA. To increase the pressure, we can increase the force or reduce the area. For example, a nail and a hammer. A, ha a hammer usually is heavy, with, which gives a great force. A nail has a small area. Therefore, it is easy to press the nail to the bottom for this case. Another example is, it is more tiring to wear narrow high heel shoes than shoes with broad and low heels. Now, let's look at this example. An elephant with a mass of 4,000 kilograms stands on the ground on its four legs. Assume that its foot pump is in circular shape with diameter of 40 cm. Calculate the total pressure exerted on the ground by the elephant. You can pause the video and try to answer the question yourself. Now, let's look at the solution. The weight the formula is W equals mg. So, for this case, the weight of the elephant will be 4,000 times 10, which will give us 40,000 newtons. The area of the foot pump will be 4 times pi r square, which means 4 foot. So, we will get 4 times pi, 0 0.2 divided by 2 square, and we will get 0 0.04 pi, or 0 0.12566 meters square. Applying the pressure formula P equals F over A and plug in the values 40,000 divided by 0 0.12566 we will get 318,319 or we round it off to 3 significant figures which is 318,000 Pascal. Do you get the answer correct? Pressure in liquid. How do we calculate the pressure in liquid? Now let's look at this diagram. So this is liquid with certain depth. So we model it with a cylinder shape where this is the base area and this is the height. In this shape, there is a G or there is a weight at the direction of pointing downwards. Then we look at the formula of pressure P equals F over A and the F is equal mg which is the weight of the liquid. From the density formula, rho equals to m over V, the mass m will be rho V. We also know that the volume for the cylinder is the base area times the height. Therefore, the mass is rho a h. Now, we substitute this formula into the pressure formula, we will get rho a h g over a. We can cancel the a and at the end, we get the pressure in liquid is p equals rho g h. So, this is the formula for pressure in liquid. From this formula, we can see that the pressure of liquid is dependent on the density of the liquid, the gravitational acceleration, usually is a constant 10 meters per second square, and the depth of the liquid. The pressure of liquid increases with the depth. So, now let's look at one simple experiment 
you can punch holes inside of a large container at fixed intervals. So this is the container and we punch three points. Then we fill up the water with the container. What can we observe? So we can see that the water squeezes out further from the hole at the bottom. The water squeezes out nearest to the container from the hole at the top. Conclusion is water squeezes out further with increasing depth. This shows that the water pressure increases with the depth. Hydraulic pressure Pascal's principle Pascal principle states that the change in pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted unchanged to every part of the fluid as well as the walls of the container. Let's look at this model. So we have piston 1 and piston 2. At the bottom of piston 1, there is an area, A1. Similarly, at the bottom of piston 2, there is an area, A2. A force F1 is exerted on piston 1. A pressure P1 is produced below piston 1. So P1 here. This pressure is transmitted equally to every part of the liquid including piston 2. This pressure at piston 2, P2 is equal to the pressure at piston 1, P1. They are at the same level. Therefore, P1 equals to P2. P, uh, F1 over A1 equals to F2 over A2. Since A2 is greater than A1, therefore F2 is greater than F1. When the piston 1 moves downwards with a distance of D1, the piston 2 moves outwards at the distance of D2 as well. Based on the principle of conservation of energy, work done 1 equals to work done 2 which will give us F1 times D1 equals F2 times D2. Pressure of the atmosphere The Earth is surrounded by a layer of air called atmosphere. The weight of the layer of air exerts a pressure on the surface of Earth known as atmospheric pressure. The average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1.013 times 10 power 3 Pascal or 1 atmosphere, 1 atm. Atmospheric pressure decreases as altitude increases as the density of the air decreases at greater heights. The use of atmospheric pressure is drinking water using a straw. When we suck the water, the low pressure in mouth and the atmospheric pressure is higher pressure, we should push the water through the straw. Similarly, a syringe. When the plunger is pulled up, there is a low pressure in the barrel. So the atmospheric pressure, which is higher pressure, will push the liquid into the barrel. The third example is suction cup. So the atmospheric pressure holds the suction cup tightly against the wall, hence it will not drop. Barometer. A barometer utilizes a liquid column to measure atmospheric pressure. Usually, mercury is used as liquid column because it has high density, hence it does not create a column that is too high to measure. This is the basic structure of a barometer, which consists of a glass tube and mercury. This is the perpendicular height that we measure in order to get the pressure of liquid. So, 
P1 and P2 are at the same level. Therefore, pressure 2 is equal to pressure 1. And pressure 2 is same as atmospheric pressure, while pressure 1 is the pressure of the liquid. Therefore, PATM will be equal to rho GH. We can use this formula to calculate the atmospheric pressure. So, it doesn't matter how the glass tube looks like. It can be slant. It can be different shape. It can be with different diameter. However, we only concern about the perpendicular height, which we can use it or apply it into the formula. So, mercury height is always a perpendicular height. Now, let's talk about manometer. Manometer is used to measure the pressure difference between the atmospheric pressure and a gas or liquid in a container. So this is the basic structure of a simple manometer. This is the height difference. This is pressure 1 and this is pressure 2. If the tube is open-ended at one end, then it is exposed to atmospheric pressure, P at the end. Since pressure 1 and pressure 2 are at the same level, therefore pressure 1 equals to pressure 2. For pressure 1, it is equal to the pressure of the gas. For pressure 2, it is equal to the pressure of the mercury, PHG, and the pressure of the atmosphere, P at the end. Therefore, P gas equals P mercury plus P atm or rho gh plus P atm. We can use this formula to calculate the pressure of the unknown gas. Common units of pressure. Very often, pressure can be represented in a few common units. For example, SI unit which is the Pascal, or MMHG, or ATM. The SI unit is for atmospheric pressure equals 1.013 times 10 power 5 Pascal, or 1.013 times 10 to the power 5 newtons per meter square, or 1.013 times 10 to the power 5 kilograms per meter per second square. For MMHG, the density of mercury is 13,500 kilograms per meter square. So, 760 MMHG equals rho GH, which is 13,500 times 10 times 760 divided by 1,000 because we want to convert the millimeters to meters. Therefore, it is equivalent to 1.026 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal, which is about 1 atm. For atm, 1 atm is 1.013 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Literally, it means atmospheric pressure at sea level. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy, you can track your learning more effectively. Download my notes in printable PDF form. Take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter. Get your first hand updated contents from me. Get quicker response from me and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one time payment, no recurring fees. No hidden cost. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees 
and revision crash causes. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like, anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.